Once upon a time, there was Nigel's, Survival, Bounty, and DSL. These four supermarkets lived in harmony until Nigel's disappeared and Massey started to make a set of lines. But then everything changed when the Chinese supermarkets started popping up. On a serious note though, there has been a notable increase in the number of Chinese supermarkets all across Guyana. One to the point where Guyanese are starting to make posts about it on Facebook. However, this has put Guyanese in a quite interesting conundrum. On one hand, you hear a lot of people saying, oh, the Chinese cheaper, it makes sense for me to buy there. But on the other hand, you hear the Chinese taking over, we gotta do something about this. This interesting situation leaves Guyanese to choose between being loyal to the flag or loyal to the pocket. And as we like to say, for a lot of people, things tight. I'm the unspecialist. Let's have a little preliminary discussion about these Chinese supermarkets taking over the country. Divorce is hard, painful, and complicated. After the heartbreak comes paperwork. Washington Law Firm specializes in helping you through that process. We know how hard endings can be, so we take your legal representation seriously. At Washington Law Firm, we provide serious help for serious legal matters like divorce. To book your free consultation, call 718-877-3100. Or find us at 455 Utica Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. If you'd like to advertise with us, be sure to make contact via our Facebook page. You can also inquire about hiring me to host your events, record voiceovers, or radio ads. The beautiful voice that you heard in the ad on this video is also available to you along with many others. A few days ago, a table went viral on Ghana's little corner of social media. That table compared the numbers of Chinese and local supermarkets in areas all across the country. As you go through the table and get to the bottom, you'll realize that Chinese supermarkets are a lot more prevalent than some may think. And in fact, whoever compiled the table showed that their total has more Chinese supermarkets than local supermarkets overall. The numbers appeared neck and neck and the table itself generated lots of controversy in the comments. So in this video, I'll look to address some of those controversial or contentious points and share some insights into this rapid increase or rise of Chinese supermarkets across Guyana. One of the first opinions or comments that really stood out to me were the ones that went something like, but the Guyanese need to understand that Chinese are also Guyanese. These people are one of the six people, so we should be applauding their success. They're opening businesses all over the country. This is impressive. To those people who made comments like that and those who share those thoughts, I have to send you a resounding no. These Chinese are not the original Guyanese Chinese, referring to those that came during the period of indentureship. These Chinese are relatively recent immigrants from mainland China. Ironically, they're an immigrant group that may get less media and social media attention than those like the Haitians and Venezuelans or even from other Caribbean islands simply because they may not be perceived in as problematic a manner as you see with Venezuelans or with Haitians. As a result, we're in the situation we see today where it seems like they've had an overnight takeover of the retail industry. Nonetheless, those who know can tell that these Chinese look different, sound different, and even behave differently than those that the common people would consider Guyanese Chinese. And if you take the time to look into their backgrounds, you'll notice that even those with Guyanese documentation are Chinese citizens. Therefore, those who had the comments acting or maybe even genuinely believing that these Chinese people are colloquially Guyanese to the bone are only sounding like blind people walking straight off the edge of a cliff. One of the things that may potentially be causing all this alarm is not just that these Chinese supermarkets are appearing, but they're appearing everywhere and in clusters to the extent where basically you could say, hey, you go behind God back and you could find a Chinese supermarket. To share a personal story, I remember going on the Essequibo Coast a few years ago. And at that time, you may have seen two or three Chinese supermarkets. You take a drive along the Essequibo Coast in 2024, and I guarantee you, you can count at least 10 or 11 Chinese supermarkets on that road. And sure enough, my personal experience can be replicated at locations, communities all across the country. You can take a drive on Aubrey Barker Road. 
Take a drive on the railway embankment. Take a drive on Rupert Craig Highway. Take a drive on Dennis Street in Sophia. The list goes on and on. In fact, you can let me know other locations down in the comments. Which brings me to something else that was mentioned in the comments and is worth taking note of. That table, kudos to whoever did it because it's a good place to start. However, I'm of the firm belief and many persons in the comments as well are of the firm belief that the table is inaccurate. It may not be inaccurate by a lot, but it certainly seems that way. And when I say inaccurate, I don't mean that we may have underestimated the number of local supermarkets. And even if we did, what I'm trying to suggest is quite the opposite. The table most likely underreports the number of Chinese supermarkets across the country. For instance, look at some of the roads or locations that I gave previously. Aubrey Barker Road, Dennis Street. You'll notice that on relatively short stretches of road, you can find four, sometimes five Chinese supermarkets. In one part of Dennis Street, you got a Chinese supermarket, you count maybe two or three billions, and there's another Chinese supermarket. And I'm sure the same can be done in other places as well. Something else that you can glean from looking at the table and making note of the observations that I've made throughout this video is that these Chinese supermarkets are more concentrated in low-income areas. In fact, that concentration is sometimes three to four times higher than in areas that may not be described or considered as low income. Now, what does that suggest to you? These supermarkets are employing a very shrewd and wildly successful strategy in exploiting the spending habits and limited available income in these low income areas. As a result, mom and pop shops, or as we like to call them, the corner shops, take in blows. And them same blows brings the big issue to the forefront. Guyanese have a big part to play in this supposed takeover. Ultimately, as much as the retail sector serves the consumer, it also follows the consumer. These businesses exist because consumers will come and buy products, and these businesses succeed because consumers come and buy products. So ultimately, the biggest way Guyanese can make a change or influence anything that you see there is by their spending habits, where they choose to spend their dollar how they choose to spend their dollar, etc. And of course, this will bring back the age-old debate, oh, the Chinese cheaper. And I understand. However, we could take some time to analyze why the Chinese are cheaper and why, in many cases, it actually isn't cheaper. It just appears that way. But people continue to shop because they get the feeling that they're saving money. Supermarkets are well known for playing different psychological tricks and employing numerous tactics on consumers. These Chinese supermarkets are no exception. However, because of the giddiness and perhaps eagerness of Guyanese to go and save a dollar, these tactics often go unnoticed. And as they go unnoticed, the Chinese continue to gain greater market share in this retail sector. To keep the length of this video down, I'll avoid getting into too deep of an analysis. However, this particular topic has many areas that we can explore a lot deeper. And these are areas that we probably should explore a lot deeper. So this topic can actually become somewhat of a docu-series, if you will. If you'd like to see me dive deeper into this comparison, some of the phenomena at play, etc., let me know down in the comments because if there is support for it and a desire i'll definitely take some time and effort to put something together for you guys regardless i'd like to hear your thoughts on this supposed takeover who do you think is at fault the people the government the chinese what forces do you think are at play here and do you think there's anything guyanese and local supermarkets can do to maintain a foothold in their own country. Another side to this is that there's no problem at all. This is a free market. These businesses are free to engage in competition. They're competing. And as far as we can tell, they're succeeding. So from a purely capitalistic perspective, there's no problem here. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.